Joining us for a look at what progress BC and Canada have made in the almost 10 years since that agreement was signed is UBC climate scientist Simon Donner. Thanks for joining us, Simon. First of all, um, perhaps a bit of nostalgia looking back for, for people. Where is Canada all those years later? Well, you know, Canada's made made a lot of effort. Uh, we it just hasn't hasn't had the impact quite yet that we'd hoped for. You know, the the current government, you know, since Paris has put put in the most aggressive and most ambitious climate policies in the history of Canada. It's not even close, and it's not just the federal carbon price. There's a suite of different climate policies the government's put in place. And the result of that, our emissions have declined, but they haven't declined nearly enough to meet the targets that have been set. So we're taking action. It's just not ambitious enough yet. And remind us, where are we in terms of, of the, the target? How close are we? Yeah, so the target is the target that the Canadian government chose was a 40 percent reduction, at least a 40 percent reduction below 2005 levels by the year 2030. And emissions are down about 8 percent. And so there's still a long ways to go. It'll be it's going to be really challenging to close that full gap to the target. That being said, there are policies in place that should at least close some of it, you know, if not all the way there. How is BC doing? What are the goals and challenges provincially over the next few years? Well, ironically, you know, as much as we, you know, people tend to uh, to be upset at the federal government about climate change, the the rest of Canada has been more effective at reducing emissions than British Columbia has. And so emissions of British Columbia have been pretty much flat over the past 15 years, a little bit of variation here and there from year to year. Now, of course, the population of BC is growing. And so the fact that emissions are flat does mean that we are making efforts to reduce emissions. And, you know, we're seeing shifts to uh, uh, electric vehicles, switch, uh, shifts to electric heat pumps uh, for heating and cooling, um, cooling homes that's making a difference, but it's just nothing compared to the targets that have been set for BC. So it is really a challenge here. Fossil fuel reduction, uh, as we heard in that story, front and center when we talk about this issue from then to now. But the key issue, this COP, is climate finance. And we heard that in 2015. Can you break down what that is and, and where Canada stands on that? Yeah, so the, the idea of climate finance, it, it goes to the very beginning of these climate summits, that recognizing that the developed world is, is largely responsible for climate change and should help uh, mobilize money to help the developing world respond, whether that is to, to adapt or to mitigate. And so it's not necessarily grants from the government. It can include all sorts of different uh, forms of finance, loans, and potentially even private investment. And accounting for it is really challenging. Canada, at least under the current government, has been pretty welcome, welcoming around the idea of climate finance. It was a a package of, of over $5 billion of finance that was offered uh, through a variety of, of federal federal coffers uh, to the developing world. Not all of it has been has been shared quite yet, uh, but, it, you know, and it was at least a pretty big step up from where Canada was, you know, more than 10 years ago. So so Canada has been more or less on the right side of the finance conversation. Um, but but it's just such a challenge to come to agreement globally. And quickly, we appreciate your time. Do you think they'll find a deal in Baku? I think they'll come up with a deal, but it'll be very vague because right now they're quite far apart on the details. Simon Donner from UBC, we appreciate your time and your expertise. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.